From the restaurant kitchen to your kitchen, the technique of using high heat to seal in the juices by forming a delicious crust. On today's menu, a classic strip steak served with an impressive mustard cream pan sauce. Then I'll teach you the easy to master technique for utterly delicious seared duck breast with a port wine reduction, ideal for entertaining. Plus, how to sear a salmon filet with the crispiest skin and the trick to perfectly brown scallops. Pan searing steak. This is a very simple lesson, and I just want to talk to you a little bit about some of the things that you should know before you start to pan sear. Uh, one is the meat itself. Choose meat from the middle loin, and this is a beautiful, beautiful steak. It's called a strip steak. Uh, it has no bone, it has a little bit of fat right here on both these pieces. I'm just gonna leave it. It's a nice thing to throw to the dogs after the meal. Uh, make sure the meat is room temperature. Bring it out of the refrigerator about an hour before you're going to cook. And dry the meat very well with paper toweling before you start to cook. Uh, the pan itself. This is a well-seasoned cast iron pan. Really hot and you just throw a drop of water like that. That's what you want. Sizzling hot not smoking. Okay, about a tablespoon of butter for each steak. We're doing two. And basically it's gonna take four minutes per side. Okay, now season with salt and pepper. And the reason that you dry the meat is because we do not want to steam the meat. We want to sear it. So any moisture will tend to collect underneath the meat and cause steam. And I'm using a generous amount of salt and pepper. Not too much, but just enough. And that little bit of butter really helps the caramelization of the surface of the meat. Don't ever season the meat before you're ready to put it in the pan. Uh, that will cause the juices to leach, and you don't want that. You don't want any oozing juices. These are inch thick steaks, by the way. I always find it very amusing. You know how at the grill when the guys are pressing down on the meat with the spatula? That's why use tongs instead. Don't go pressing down on the meat. It doesn't need to be pressed. Four minutes, then it will be ready to turn. The reason I'm using cast iron is because they heat evenly very, very well. You can use a nice thick bottomed stainless steel pan too, it works, but this works better. And another thing that really helps you cook the perfect steak is an instant read meat thermometer. If you insert it into the middle of that cut of steak, uh, 115 to 120 for rare, 125 for medium rare, and 135 to 140 for medium. I think it is time to turn the steak. Look at that perfect color. You see, I didn't move it, and look at the great color that we achieved. It's tempting to move, tempting to poke, press, whatever, but don't bother. Time is up. Okay, I'm gonna test the internal temperature, which is 125. It's done. Mm, that looks very good. So let them rest for a few minutes. Now we'll make a little bit of sauce from the pan drippings. A quarter of a cup of vermouth. And cook until the liquid is almost reduced. It takes about 40 seconds or so. I have to stand back so I don't get splattered. Quarter of a cup of heavy cream and a teaspoon of Dijon mustard. And add your heavy cream. Oh, does that smell really good? The sauce looks very good. The steaks have rested. You can serve this with a baked potato, sauteed spinach, broccoli rabe. I love steak with some green vegetable. And I have some fresh asparagus right from the garden to serve with these. 
So you have a dinner in approximately 10 minutes. I think I could sit down and eat that right now. And now just a little bit of this delectable sauce. And I'm just going to put it off to the side here like that. And here you have a gorgeous steak dinner. Your family's going to think they went to the very best steak restaurant. Now, I bet you'd like to see the inside of the steak. Well, I'll just take a slice right here. Now, that looks like a perfect medium rare. And that's what I want. I can't wait. I have to give it a try. Just a little bit of that Dijon mustard sauce. Perfectly cooked, tender, juicy, and very delicious. Pan seared steak. Next, we're going to pan sear a duck breast. This has long been a favorite way to cook duck breast. The French love rendering the fat from under the skin of a duck and serving the meat a beautiful medium rare. There's a little bit of preparation before you actually get that duck breast into the pan. I'll show you how, and the ingredients, very simple. A beautiful duck breast like this. This is a Muscovy duck breast, a shallow pan, a lot of coarse salt, either a very, very sharp knife for scoring the skin, uh, but better yet, this amazing tool, which is called a jacquard. It's a series of very sharp blades that pierce the skin of the duck. A saute pan and heavy bottomed stainless steel is perfect, and a pair of tongs. That's all it takes to sear a duck breast. A Muscovy duck breast like this weighs about a pound, and that should be enough beautiful meat to serve two people. It's well trimmed, the skin is tucked under this side, and it's time to either score the skin or use the jacquard tool. And I'm gonna use the jacquard tool on this particular duck breast. Now watch what happens, you just put it here and you go through the skin. You can see a series of little holes in the skin. All these little holes will help release the fat that is under the skin. Most of this fat is right under the skin and not in the meat itself. And that's why if we get rid of the fat by, by pan searing, we will have accomplished the task. A, a crispy skin, very little fat, and very nice lean meat, which is very good for you. So there, we have our jacquarded skin. I love the name, jacquard. And now put a layer of salt right on a sheet like this and put the duck breast skin side down in the salt. It should stay like this for approximately an hour. No longer, you don't want the salt to permeate the meat. What it's really doing is getting into the skin. You're gonna have a very nice, flavorful, crispy skin if you do this step and a couple others along the way. Now here's one that's already in the salt. You can see how it is completely salt encrusted. And this is what it would look like if you used a sharp knife and scored the skin through the fat. But I find that by using the jacquard tool, you get a more beautiful presentation and a one beautiful piece of crispy skin. Now don't heat your pan. You remember, we really did preheat the cast iron skillet for the steak, but for duck breast, um, because of all that fat that we're trying to render out of the skin, we start in a cold pan. So the duck has been resting in the salt for one hour. Take a stiff brush and brush off the excess salt from the skin and proceed with another step, which is a 25 minute step. And that is to put the duck on a bed of ice covered with plastic. Put the duck breast skin side down. What we wanna do is chill the fat and the skin side of the duck. And put some pie weights right on top of the meat and let that sit for 25 minutes before you put the duck breast in the pan. 
So you have to have about an hour and uh, a half to, an, to two hours of preparation before you start cooking the duck. So just remember that when you're having a dinner party. Now this particular duck breast has been weighted and been sitting on the bed of ice for 25 minutes. Remove the weights, put the duck breast, oh, it's very rigid and cold, uh, right in a cold pan. Sprinkle the meat side with just a little bit of black pepper. It's already been sitting in salt, so I'm not gonna add any extra salt uh, at this stage. And using your weights, put the weights back down on top of the meat. Now turn your flame to, oh, kind of medium. You're gonna render the fat slowly. It's going to take about 25 minutes to render the fat from under the skin of the duck and to crisp the skin. You want a beautiful golden brown skin. And the weights uh, help the meat from shrinking and keep the meat nice and flat so it cooks evenly. As the fat accumulates, melts from under the skin, uh, you can just, with this metal spoon, spoon it off into a receptacle. Uh, you'll want to save that duck fat. It is wonderful for uh, browning uh, sliced potatoes. Uh, it's wonderful for sauteing garlic and onions. And duck fat is unlike beef fat. It is more like olive oil, monosaturated uh, fat, than it is like beef or pork fat. And in fact, Muscovy ducks have less fat and less calories per pound than turkey. Isn't that an interesting fact? Oh, you can see I'm already getting a couple tablespoons of fat here. You know, when you cook a turkey, how much fat there is in the bottom of the pan. Very interesting. Now, you remember I told you not to press down your steak with a spatula. Actually, this is a different story. You can and should press the meat down with a spatula or weigh it down to force contact with the pan surface. And it will not make the duck meat less juicy. So here we have a little bit more fat accumulating. Preheat your oven, by the way, when you start pan searing to 350 degrees because the duck breast actually finishes cooking in the oven. So it's been 25 minutes. Let's turn the meat, oh my gosh, look at that gorgeous color. And keep the weight on the duck because again, it's cooking nice and evenly. Here's one that was scored. When this is cut on an angle, you will get probably 13, 14 very nice slices from this duck. This is ready to go in the oven. And I'm just waiting for this one. So this one is just about right. And I'm going to put this one back in the pan also. And now this goes into the oven 350 degrees, skin side up. And we want the meat to register 165 degrees on an instant read meat thermometer. It's been eight minutes, the duck breasts are done. These can rest on the board for just a few minutes. They will continue to cook while they sit on the board for about five to seven minutes before you start to carve them. But they are beautiful. Most of the fat has been rendered out from right under the skin and they look perfect, as good as any restaurant. Now, pour off any fat. I'm going to start our sauce. Two uh, tablespoons of shallot go right into the pan. There's just a tiny bit of fat in the pan, which will help cook these shallots until they're transparent. And we're going to use port wine, three quarters of a cup of port. It's a sweet red wine, which is very delicious with duck. And to this, add a half a cup of chicken broth, vegetable broth, veal broth, Add a couple sprigs of thyme for a flavor. And we want to reduce this liquid until it is nice and syrupy. Now to make sure that you don't touch the handle because it's very hot from the oven, keep your pot holder right on the handle. That's a good tip to remember. Uh, don't let it slide into the fire though. And now whisk in your butter. 
this little added touch makes the sauce silky smooth. And do this off heat, by the way. Mm, very nice. And now carve your duck. And you want to carve on an angle. And it's good to use a board with a little moat around it like this to catch the juices. Mm, very nicely cooked. Try to make the slices uniform. This looks like a good medium rare duck breast. And it is juicy as you can see. And look how much, when you slice it correctly, look how much you get. This is quite a lot of meat. So the two ends, they're for me. And let's see how this one looks. This looks very perfect too. Yes, very nicely done. Mm, just beautiful. So now half of this goes on our serving plate. And now how would you like some shoestring fries? And a side order of sauteed spinach. And there's absolutely no reason whatsoever to go out for dinner. Not when you can cook like this at home. A little of this port wine reduction. A good bottle of the best Pinot Noir. And you have a perfect pan-seared duck breast. There are many scallop species, but in general, uh, scallops are classified into two broad groups, bay scallops and sea scallops. The muscle of the sea scallop is not as tender as the smaller uh, bay scallops, uh, though slightly chewier, and the meat is still sweet and very moist. And we're going to show you how to pan saute pan sear sea scallops today. Because the scallops perish very quickly, they are generally sold out of the shell without the beautiful orange row, which is attached to it, but with still this little adductor muscle attached. I remove the adductor muscle and uh, we have a nonstick pan heating up on the stove. Add some grapeseed oil. And the reason I'm using grapeseed oil is because it has the highest smoking point of any of the oils. And notice I'm not putting much in, less than a tablespoon. Preheat the pan alone and then add the fat or the oil. Oil heated up along with the pan is more likely to get gummy and more likely to cause sticking. Now the mussels have been dried with a paper towel. Sprinkle generously with coarse salt and very finely ground white pepper. And do both sides. These are lovely scallops. And always try to plan your menu so that you're in season and not trying to find ingredients that are out of season. Now, choose a saute pan that is large enough for all of your seafood without crowding. Now, you can do that with the scallops just to make sure that they're not going to stick. It's not like pan searing a steak where you don't move it for a few minutes. These you want to make sure move around. And you are going to get a beautiful golden color on your scallops. I'm serving these just with lemon, wedges, something simple. Now scallops are a rich source of protein, iron, niacin, and vitamin B12. And they have a very rich flavor, so you don't need to eat too many. Two or three of these, the big ones, are sufficient for a first course or maybe three for a dinner course. Don't turn too soon or the scallops may tear. But I think they look like they're already browning nicely on one side. Look at that. Oh, what a perfect color. And the smell is so nice. They are not tearing, they are cooking, I would say, perfectly. 
And when cooking fish and shellfish, it's best to use a non-stick skillet to prevent any sticking whatsoever. We don't want to have these stick. These are great looking. Okay, looks like they are done. Now I have a plate with a paper towel on it. When I remove them, remove them right to this plate. Don't get them too brown. And here you have amazing looking scallops. A pretty wedge of lemon. They look so good. And I'm putting a little bit of coarse pink Hawaiian salt on top. So that took, oh, all of about six minutes to do. No reason not to have scallops for dinner. And when cut into, scallops should be opaque all the way through, just like that. A beautiful piece of salmon like this deserves really nice treatment in the pan. I love to cook salmon with the skin on. Uh, this skin will get crispy and delicious. Always salt it generously before putting in the pan. Oh, and make sure you dry it also, important. And salt with coarse salt. Uh, throughout these recipes, I'm using a kosher salt. And now two teaspoons of olive oil in a hot skillet. This is a non-stick, similar to the kind we use for the scallop. And put the salmon in skin side down over medium to high heat to make sure that it has enough time to brown and crisp. This Go like that to make sure that it's moving and not sticking. And make sure also that your oven is preheated to 350 degrees. When searing a piece of fish or meat that's thick, it's best to finish it in the oven to ensure that it cooks evenly, as we did with the duck. So here we have our salmon. It's been about five minutes. I think the skin is seared nicely. Now just turn this piece over. Ah, lovely. And so now transfer this directly to a 350 degree preheated oven. Looks good. And now I think the fish is done. It's been cooking for five minutes. So easy, that's the beauty of pan searing. Now a trick to seeing if the fish is done is insert the knife into the center and feel if it's warm, it is warm. So this will be very nicely cooked salmon. Lift it carefully, place it on the plate. Now this should be served with um, risotto, with oh, any number of things. It's really beautiful. Now, if you want to gussy it up a little bit, a compound butter, fresh, sweet butter with some fresh herbs in it, like tarragon or uh, chervil, mild herbs, very, very nice with salmon. That can be placed right atop the fish, like that. And you have a very beautiful presentation and a very healthy dish. Pan seared salmon, easy, delicious, nutritious, and uh, fast. Well, now that you know the methods, the techniques, and the secrets to pan searing, I hope you'll try these delicious recipes at home.